So as you can see, we've got the motor assembly here. We've got the outer arm, the aluminium extrusion, which is adjustable so we can move the motor up and down. And what we've done here is made up a adapter plate to attach the motor bracket to the actual extrusion. And we've also made up this adjusting knob here, which we can now adjust the motor up and down. And we've also got a locking pin where we can lock it into position. And due to the, right, the number of holes in here, that gives us a precise reference as to how much we're moving it up and down. First thing we've got to do is to make sure that, that the motor right, is, is square to the block. And we've, we've, we've already gone through and done that. So this is square to that and that is square to here. So the next part is, is to put this onto the assembly. So as you can see we've got our four securing bolts for the motor assembly and what I'm doing now is screwing right the um, motor assembly up to the cross board. So what I'm doing here is just using the, the cross board and just tapping the motor assembly in so it's square to the cross board and level with the bottom there. Now that's just the starting point. I mean, this thing can be adjusted up and down. So what we've done here is um, basically continued the wiring out from the motor. We've joined joined a longer piece of um, wiring on of the same colour scheme. And as you can see, we've put some um, some heat sink tubing um, along the wire just to hold it together, so it doesn't. But it also gives us a lot of flexibility and freedom with the wire as well. What we're going to do now is put the termination points on. So the first part we're going to do is, is just strip some of the insulation off the wire and I'm just doing this with some side cutters. You can use fancy tools but I find this works which just effectively the thing you've got to be careful of is not to um, cut your wire strands and twist the wire up. And we'll do the same for the black wiring, about the same length. So you just go around, around the insulation. You just feel it. This insulation is fairly easy to cut through, so it's not too bad. So it's checking that the soldering iron is the temperature, which it seems to be. And just clean that off. your tips clean and you supply some solder to your tip coming from underneath and just give it an even coating no big lumps on it same here coming from underneath just bring the heat through if your heat's right when you put the solder on top of the the wiring it should just melt through like that I just want to put a small bit of um, flux in the area there, just so that the solder takes takes a bit easier. Again, as before, make sure your tip is clean, and also make sure it's up to temperature. I'm just going to apply a little bit of heat. To the bottom and just put a, a little bit of solder. Now, I didn't put a lot of solder in, I just want enough to um, adhere to. So what I'm doing is just um, got the splay, splay connector, um, the wire that's going in which will crimp around right at the back area there onto the insulation and this inner portion here will be folded in onto the wire but I don't want it too long so I'm just going to cut off the excess. So now it's even, even there, and you can buy crimping tools or obtain crimping tools to do all this, but this is pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to fold over the tabs here, just onto the insulation. Just do it slowly and carefully so you get it to fold down properly. 
and bring the other tab over that's folded in onto the insulation as you can see there and now we've got to fold in onto the the wire and you can see there that I've got it reasonably crimped crimp down but like I said that's why we put the solder in so I'm just going to feed some solder in through that point there and that'll solder the wire to this blade connector so what I'll do now that I've got it um, closed down around the cable and the wire I'm just going to apply some heat and just feed the solder in you see the solder just feeding in there now I just hold the heat in for a little bit so it holds in and just take it off so what we've done is just temporarily put the spike connectors into the connector that we're using and we just want to check that this is rotating the right way so it's, it's got to rotate in a clockwise fashion so if we put power on you'll hear the fan start up and then we can put power onto the motor and adjust the speed and you can see there that it's, it's traveling in the clockwise direction now this will go fairly high the machine is finally put together we can adjust the the depth or the location of the right cutter and we can bring that right down down to its stop position now what we've done here is basically brought it down so when it gets to a stop position it can't hit the bed so we're just above the bed height there and we can adjust it up as we need it depending on the thickness of the stock that we're, we're actually doing at that time so up the top here we have our adjusting knob and located on the right the outside of that we have um, a series of holes there's 20 holes in all, um, in all and we have an indexing system that we can just lock into so once we've got it set to a height you know it holds that height there's no playing that at all and we can adjust that to where we need it right for all the depth of cut that we want to do or the series of depth of cuts that we want to do as you can see it slides quite freely the linear rails, these two here, are 500 millimetres in length and we have a bottom support on under the wood which we showed you earlier which stops it from being depressed down and what we do basically is put in, right if we we're cutting in this axis then we put the board across or we can move the board to the side and, and square it up and run a longitudinal cut as well so it gives us the option of both. Now for now for the longitudinal cuts we can move that board to where we want depending on the width of the right the timber that we're right, right dealing with and that gives us a range of versatility we don't have to move this backwards and forwards this only adjusts up and down so this is the right control for the actual motor itself as you can see here we've got a fan system on that's got a filter on it so we don't get dirt and dust inside the electronics um, we've got an on off switch here and we've got a speed control which we can adjust there up to, up to full rev per minute. So once we've got our back support or side support squared up, we're just using clamps. 